Hello everyone. Our next topic is the cryosphere. This is the study of the frozen parts of the Earth's surface. And this includes things like glaciers and ice sheets. So what other things do we see that are parts of the cryosphere? Now one common aspect is snow. Uh, we are very familiar with this phenomenon, particularly in the New England region. Large swaths of the uh, New England region and the northern parts of uh, the Ameri North American continent is covered with snow particularly in the winter time and as you can see this hugely changes the <clears throat> the entire appearance of the whole uh, land surface uh, the vegetated surface looks fairly dark whereas the snow covered areas are fairly white and now this changes the reflectivity of the surface you know, the whiter the surface the more reflective it is the more solar radiation it can reflect the darker parts of the ocean water and then the vegetation it absorbs more radiation Similarly, as you go north, uh, parts of the river are also uh, frozen, and we have a presence of river ice uh, in various parts of the northern regions of uh, North American continent, uh, Siberia, and all of us, uh, the Arctic regions. We also have sea ice. Uh, if you go north in the Arctic Ocean, in the winter, the sea ice basically freezes. The, the, the ocean freezes, and you have something called sea ice. Now, this also changes the property of the ocean. Uh, it's more reflective now. Now this is also sea ice in a different uh, part of the uh, uh, different month. And as you can see, uh, depending on the month and the sea uh, and then the timing, the properties of the sea ice also changes. And you can see here, you can see the ocean on uh, as the sea ice starts to crack. Another aspect of uh, uh, the cryosphere is glaciers, and we are probably familiar with glaciers here. And here, there is a typical uh, valley glacier uh, that runs through uh, uh, mountainous areas here. Uh, very typical of places like the Himalayan region and the Alps. You see a lot of these valley glaciers. There's also uh, something called a tidewater glacier, that glaciers that end up uh, terminating in the ocean and water body. We see a lot of these tidewater glaciers in parts of Alaska. And this uh, map here shows the distribution of glacial, glaciated regions across the world. So as you can see, um, the green uh, dots here indicate highly glaciated regions. Um, so all along the, uh, the, the west coast of South America, the Andean Mountains, the Himalayan region and Central Asian uh, glaciated regions right here. Uh, Alaska and uh, surrounding area here there's a lot of glaciers here and also uh, close to Greenland uh, uh, there's glaciers here also in northern Europe uh, there's glaciers and you can see there's glaciers scattered across all latitudes another part of the frozen uh, landscape is something called permafrost this is basically ground that's literally frozen if a ground remains frozen for two or more years uh, you get basically blocks of ice here underneath uh, the soil here. So here you can see a transect. Uh, so a cross section profile, this is the top of the landscape here. And as you go underneath, you see this block of solid frozen ice. And this is called permafrost. There's uh, also another frozen part called the ice sheet. So these are huge uh, uh, frozen, basically continents, things like Greenland here. Uh, it's a massive, uh, uh, ice sheet similar to uh, Greenland we have Antarctica another uh, large uh, continental ice sheet here uh, basically frozen uh, contains uh, enormous amounts of uh, ice here as well now what is the problem that we are seeing with these uh, uh, frozen parts of the surface now as the climate has been changing and as the, the temperature rapidly increases we see that these ice basically melts when, t when we increase temperature, ice melts, and that's a very basic uh, physical phenomenon. So what do we see? Permafrost, the frozen ground, when temperature increases, the frozen ground starts to melt, and you see these ground that are basically uh, uh, slowly sort of uh, eroding or, or thumping uh, over time. And you can see in Alaska, uh, the coastal areas where temperature is increasing, this permafrost starts to melt, and the ground slumps. And as the ground slumps, we see that there's also a lot of uh, infrastructure damage. The houses that are being uh, 
the houses that start to slump if they are under uh, permafrost that is melting. This is the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline that is built uh, across Alaska. As you can see, this is a highly uh, uh, engineered uh, pipeline that actually moves as the ground starts to uh, melt and thaw. So, uh, so it's one of the marvels of uh, the 21st century. Now, the sea ice that's covering the Arctic Ocean has been uh, also melting uh, every summer faster and faster. So every summer, uh, this is goes from 1979 to 2013, this visualization. Uh, and here on the x-axis we have time, and the y-axis is the millions of square kilometers of sea ice. So every summer, uh, as you can see, the amount of sea ice area has been declining. This is the, the minimum sea ice extent that's measured every, uh, every end of summer. As you can see, uh, every year the, the sea ice has been melting more and more which means that less of the Arctic Ocean is covered with Arctic sea ice. And as you can see, there's a significant downward trend here in the uh, sea ice cover reduction. And as I said, as I said this has huge uh, physiological, biological implications, but also uh, phys physically, you can see that as this white surface melts, we are left with dark ocean waters, which is much more absorptive. So, uh, less solar radiation is being reflected, more is being absorbed. Greenland is another area that's melting faster. Um, uh, basically, these red areas indicate a uh, uh, loss of uh, ice here. So a lot of the ice that is melted is from these margins of the Greenland ice sheet. This plot down here indicates the loss of uh, ice from Greenland in gigatons. So again, uh, one gigaton is about 400,000 Olympic pools of ice. And here we are talking about uh, 600,000 gigatons of ice loss uh, across Greenland. So again, this here, uh, coming back to the sea ice, uh, this here again shows the, uh, the ice loss, uh, sea ice loss in, in, in the Arctic Ocean. And as you can see, it's a downward trend here, and this is uh, up to present, so up to last year. So we'll see how this behaves uh, in 2016. So we are losing about 13.3% of sea ice per decade, so it's a really rapid rate. Now this is land ice, so I just mentioned Greenland here. Again, losing ice in uh, significant amounts, 281 gigatons per year of ice loss. So again. One gigaton is 400,000 uh, Olympic sized swimming pools. Similar thing is happening in Antarctica. Uh, it's losing about half of that of our Greenland. So, 118 gigatons of ice per year across Greenland. So, again, these two ice sheets are melting at a faster rate. And as you can see, uh, Greenland has been making uh, headlines. Uh, we see, uh, in, particularly in the summer, when the temperatures are higher, we see this rapid melt on the surface. Uh, these streams form on the surface that basically drain into the bottom of the ice sheet and make their way out into the ocean. Um, and we see the, all of these melt ponds that are forming on the surface of, uh, of Greenland. So all of these blue areas here that you see are basically melt ponds that are formed as a result of rapid melt every summer. Uh, so again, these are uh, examples of the, the melt waters that have been forming over Greenland every summer. And now scientists are trying to study, you know, how fast do these ice uh, melt and how fast does this water that melt on the surface uh, basically drain into the Arctic Ocean. So again, that's a, one of the major scientific studies uh, currently ongoing. Now I mentioned the reflectivity of the, the ocean, so uh, something called an ice albedo feedback is very important. Uh, ice is very white, so as you can see it's very reflective. Uh, white is uh, very reflective, it has high albedo. Albedo is basically another term for reflectivity. Whereas things like ocean and vegetation, uh, they observe more radiation. So what happens here is, as the air temperatures increase, 
uh, we are reducing the snow and ice cover that means we are reducing the white portion of the landscape which means that we are reducing the albedo so the land we are exposing more land and ocean we are reducing the ice cover that means that more of this dark surface and ocean water means that there's more absorbed from the solar radiation which means that the air temperature increases so we end up having this uh, positive feedback cycle this cyclical loop that keeps uh, uh, getting worse and worse as the temperatures increase now we c come back to a glacier we, uh, we talked about uh, glaciers briefly so this is a typical uh, uh, profile of a glacier uh, here we see that uh, the glacier can be divided into two zones the ablation zone and then the accumulation zone the accumulation zone is where the glacier uh, increases in mass uh, so as the snow falls here the glacier keeps growing in size uh, the bottom half of the glacier is called the ablation zone this is where the glacier melts uh, so here the glacier is losing mass here the glacier is gaining mass uh, so the question for scientists is uh, all over the world that are monitoring these glaciers is you know is the glacier increasing in mass or is the glacier decreasing in mass and what we see globally is that glaciers all over the world are are, are, are actually uh, melting faster and decreasing in mass and the length so this is uh, one of the uh, studies the IPCC studies where scientists from all over the world come and put together all of their studies and what we see is this is studies from all over the world that are uh, monitoring glaciers so this is measurements from 1860 to present uh, and on the y-axis we see uh, the length change in glaciers so what we see is we see a declining uh, cumulative length change of glaciers in Alaska uh, Western Canada uh, Greenland we see significant decreases in length change Scandinavian glaciers glaciers in Svalbard Iceland Northern Asia Central Europe, Middle East, uh, Andean mountains, all of these decreasing line trends means that the glaciers are uh, decreasing in length. So Central Asia. So all over we see this signal that indicates that the glaciers are in retreat. And that is significant because we are losing uh, glacier ice. Uh, and they eventually end up in the ocean, the, the, the melted ice. Our last portion is Antarctica. So this is... Uh, uh, basically one of the uh, continents where most of the ice and water is fresh water is locked up so 97 percent of all of the fresh water is locked up as ice in, in Antarctica and as you can see uh, this is the Antarctica continent this part is called the West Antarctic ice sheet and it is the more vulnerable uh, portion of this entire continent of Antarctica here we have a marine based ice sheets and it, it sits on on bedrock that is basically below sea level, which is why it's more vulnerable. It's thinner and it's more unstable. And you can see the warming trend here. Uh, the darker red is areas that are uh, increasing in temperature. Uh, so here uh, the trend is about 0.1 degrees Celsius per year, these red areas. So as you can see, this West Antarctica ice sheet is warming at a much faster rate than, than most of uh, East Antarctica. But also we see more warming around the edges of uh, these ice sheets here. This is just showing the topography of Antarctica. So you can see the trans-Antarctic mountains showing where the green areas are uh, high areas. So what we see recently in, in Antarctica is we see this rift developing. So there's cracks in the ice that, that's increasing. So this is the most... Uh, a rift that we have monitored in uh, in this ice shelf in Antarctica and scientists have been measuring and now this is from March 2016 but we see that this ice sheet has actually uh, increased in, in in length quite a bit and this and the fear is that as this rift uh, keeps growing uh, this piece will eventually break off and this eventually will uh, will never recover this so as the uh, you know, as the uh, ice shelf uh, calves or uh, breaks off, 
what's happening is that the warming of the ocean is also melting the ice shelf from underneath so what we see is that uh, there's something called this grounding line where the ice shelf meets the uh, meets the bottom of the ocean we see that this has been retreating that means that more of the ice shelf is melting from underneath as well anyway that concludes our uh, section on crash right here uh, uh, and i'll continue with another uh, lesson on glaciers uh, in the next lesson thank you